Over the last few seasons, this has been a regular occurrence for Salgueros. League wins, cup wins, League Cup wins. We've been really successful. Major news coming out of Salgueros today. Is manager Davidson's time finally up? So what has happened this season that's brought this on? League Cup semi-final, Porto. Casa de Portugal, 6th round, Benfica. Champions League then, round of 16, Bayern Munich, first leg. Champions League, second leg. But we can always rely on the league, right? So just like that, I'm going to tell you the sad, sad tale of season 20, 38, 39. Started with that thrashing in the Super Cup. Maybe that was a sign of things to come. We were knocked out in the League Cup, the Alliance Cup by Porto. Sixth round knocked out by Benfica. Champions League pretty comfortable by Bayern Munich. And have a little look at the league table. Here's the league. We finished third. It's our lowest place finish in years and years. Look at the other two teams. Porto back in it, Benfica. We only lost four matches overall. But the other two teams, just too good. There's the league campaign. We scored 82 times. Conceded 29, 75 points, but could not catch those other two teams. We have dropped right off. So the reason this episode has started this way is this season has just been a complete washout. We haven't got going at all. Although we only lost four matches in the league, it never felt it never felt quite there. So we're going to take this opportunity to revitalize things, reset, rebuild, if you like, and completely change the way we play. Now we've been playing this system. Pretty much since season 12. We're in season 16 now. Probably season 11, if I think back. Just tiny tweaks on this system. I press, I line, in your face football, attacking. We're going to completely bin it. And for season 17, we're going to completely change the way we play. Take a look deeper. The free tactic slots. I always advise having free versions of your tactic, but my versions are literally minimal changes there, you can see. It's been this way for season on season. You can see the formation now in my manager profile. It's locked in. That is the formation that is linked to my career. So we're going to take this opportunity to not only revitalise the way the team plays as we hunt that Champions League trophy and try and get our title back, we're going to revitalise the squad as well. You can see all the wanted players down there. And if any of those players don't fit into the new way we're going to play, they are out of here. We're going to expect some big bids in the summer for the... Superstars, you know who. I have no idea how we're going to hold on to João Pedro, who scored the number 30 goals this season. And obviously Vigas, who's wanted by everyone. He wants a big move as well. But look down there, he's wanted by absolutely everybody. And believe it or not, this is the one I'm most worried about. Leo Zinho has been the best player this season by a mile. 26 goals, 14 assists from attacking midfield with an average rating through the roof. And now Liverpool and Real Madrid, of course, are after him. And one more to throw in there is a rooster who's developed into probably the best centre-back you will see on the game. Probably better than Vlad the Destroyer. All those teams after him. So I would expect at least two of those players to leave us. But look, all he's not lost. The 50 best wonder kids in football list, we've got four in there, including goalkeeper Duarte and Pexotto in the top 10. Our cracking scouting team came up trunks in the transfer window as well in January. We ended up bringing a few more players in. Michael Mellon comes in from Malmo, central midfielder, can play attacking midfielder. He's got a big part to play. He's only 18, already capped five times by Sweden. 1.9 million, absolute snip. What a find. Marcello de Souza comes in from Fluminense. Eight million pounds for this kid. He's only 20, again, raided in South American football. Also in January, we managed to tie this guy down to a contract, El Oilson. He got released by Sao Paulo. I think his contract ran out. He's a little bit more experienced at 30 years old, but central midfield wise, great addition. So what are the thoughts for this new tactic next season? Well, if any of you saw the Man City video I did recently, I'm quite 
tempted to go down that route, which will mean a big change. It will mean going from really high tempo, dropping down a low tempo, try to dominate teams through possession rather than pace and direct football, which is what we do now. For starters, the mentality would change. Attacking players more linked to more direct stuff, so we probably have to drop that down to positive or balanced. In possession, will change a lot as well if we go down that route. Passing to space will probably go. Passing will drop to short and tempo. That'll get right down. How we set the team up will depend really on what sort of players we have at the start of the season. If I manage to keep hold of the defenders I've got now, I've got no problem playing a high line next season because if you look at the centre-backs, acceleration and pace and positioning of this guy, he's elite, he's elite. And next to him, Angel is no slouch over acceleration and pace of 13, 14. Positioning's good as well, so if we keep them two, we can keep that high line up, no problem. But it's a big if, it's a big if. So when I decided that the league was pretty much a write-off, I decided to play loads of the youth players. And in this game, we played Melin and we played Pexotto, just to give him a trial ready for next season. They linked up really nicely here to lay on a goal for Jao Pedro. Here's Melin floating her out, Pexotto, and a lovely little ball through to Pedro, who at 24 is now an elder statesman of the team. So this man could turn into a really important player for us, especially his adaptability there across the front four positions. Out wide, but where we've never played a player for the last four seasons, that could be where he starts next season. At the minute, they seem happy. The supporters aren't happy, but these lot seem relatively happy. And that led to this. They finally got the fingers out and gave me a new contract. And not just a contract, four more years. Whether we see that out, I don't know, but they finally, finally got there. So listen, a big summer ahead. I'm going to go ahead right now. I'm going to take these slots out, look. I'm going to clear these slots, ready to build ourselves a brand new one. This new season, it's a hell of a risk. We might have to take a step back to go forward. So next season could be a bust. Big summer coming ahead. Before I go, I will leave you with two signings that I've got locked in for next season. They're about to come in in July. See what you think. Coming in on a free transfer is Hesum Cortijo from Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's already got 23 caps for Brazil. That is a defensive midfielder that I think a few of you thought that I was crying out for. And here's a man I'm excited about. 19 year old, coming in from Mexico, Jose Mora. You will have a look at the position I've highlighted on the screen there. Wide target forward next year, anybody? 